order the other city of Liberty Place. I live on Cooley Road in West Salem. Okay, and, and what happened there? A pipe went through and got a wet blue. A pipe went through the windshield. On September 16th, 2016, during the quiet morning hours, Todd Kenhammer dialed 911 to report a sudden car collision that happened on a secluded road near La Crosse, Wisconsin. A desperate urgency colored his words as he explained to the operator that a pipe had violently crashed through the windshield of his vehicle. When the authorities arrived at the scene, Todd recounted a chilling tale of a rogue pipe dislodging from an oncoming truck, fatally striking his wife, Barbara, who clung to life until the following day. The couple, just having celebrated their 25th anniversary, left behind a void in the wake of this tragic incident. The Kenhammer's children, Jessica and Jordan, painted a picture of a loving union, insisting their parents were immersed in a blissful chapter of their lives. Their joy, however, was shattered by Barbara's untimely demise, a stark contrast to the recent celebration of becoming grandparents and achieving financial stability. Yet. The foreboding twist in this narrative emerged during the autopsy, revealing that Barbara's demise resulted from blunt force injuries to the head and neck, accompanied by three unsettling lacerations to the back of her head. The medical examiner cast doubt on Todd's version of events, asserting that the injuries sustained were inconsistent with a described accident involving a pipe of the reported size and weight. Adding an additional layer of intrigue, surveillance footage from a nearby horse ranch captured the Kenhammer vehicle passing by at 7.57 a.m. on that fateful day. However, as the tension thickened, a chilling revelation unfolded. There was no sign of a truck matching Todd's description, raising unsettling questions about the veracity of the account provided to authorities. The enigma surrounding Barbara's tragic end deepened, leaving the community on edge and the unsettling shadows of doubt lingering over the details of that morning. This is the interrogation of Todd Kenthammer. While we fast forward, let's take a moment to thank this video's sponsor, June's Journey. Get ready to travel back in time to the glitz and glamour of the 1920s in June's Journey, a thrilling free-to-play hidden object mystery game. You'll become the detective tasked with solving the murder of your sister and unearthing your family's dark secrets. As you search for hidden objects and unravel the clues, you'll be drawn deeper into a captivating detective story full of twists and turns. Featuring a diverse cast of characters and a mystery that will keep you guessing until the very end, June's journey is not to be missed. Now I have to admit, finally finding the last clue on an especially tricky level is so, so satisfying. It's my absolute favorite feeling. So put on your detective hat and get ready for a journey full of excitement and intrigue. June's Journey is free to download and is available on Android, iOS, and PC via Facebook games. And just by simply trying June's Journey, you'll be helping Morbid Curiosity out tremendously. I know you're morbidly curious, so don't wait any longer. Click on the link in the description and start your journey to solve the mystery today. Thank you. Yeah, uh, we're just going to close this door for our privacy, Todd, so because a lot of people walk back and forth and all, and I don't know if you understand that. Uh, if you need to go to the bathroom or anything at any time, you just let us know. Um, if you want to if you want to leave at any time, let us know if you get a phone call or anything like that. Well, that just be my son if anybody okay. calls. Um, I'm just going to take a few notes here, too, so that's yeah. all. Um, Mark talked to you. Um, the other day and got, and I've talked to Mark, but sometimes things get lost in translation. So what I kind of want to do today is kind of go through the the progression of things. So I, so I know we've got video that we've pulled. Um, Did you find anybody? Um, well, that's where we want to be able to figure that out. Um, so just so I know, because videos are all time specific, sometimes they're, um, while it isn't uncommon to encounter defensive body posture from suspects during interrogation, it is especially concerning to see Todd in such a peculiar pose. His arms are crossed above his head and his hands are resting on his shoulders, which subconsciously could be his way of trying to shield himself from any accusations being made against him. Combine this with his restless leg and almost immediately, 
Todd appears guilty of something. They're a little bit off with times, if you know what I mean. Their, their clock might be a little bit different, but we want to try to get that, that zeroed in on that time frame so we can find. We've seen some vehicles that we're doing some follow-up checking on. But, so I understand it more fully. Um, if we could just kind of go through that morning again, like, you know, you left, you and Barb got in the car. And we, we left our house. I don't remember what time it was. Maybe 7.30, quarter to 8, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. And um, we headed out, went across the Osmus Road up to, up to M and went, started going up M and, and um, I wasn't paying attention as to what, who was coming at me or what, we always just talked and she had a, she had a, a she always takes the thing out of her, but we go in the car. Mm -hmm. And, um, where, where were you going? Up over at Holman, okay. up at Holman. And, and she, we were, I don't know what, I don't know what kind of, how it, it looked like a bird coming at us at first, mm -hmm. like one of them swallows or something. Sure. And then it just, it just, um, it, 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 it come through the windshield. Um, um, I tried to, I tried to reach out for it, I guess. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And how did you try to reach out for it? I, 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 I lunged harder with, I tried to hold on to the, I tried to, I tried to hold on to the wheel, I think, with my right hand and lunged harder with my left. But I ended up, I think I ended up going with both hands because when I turned on the road, I was, I was over, I, I don't think I was in my, I think I was more in her, her side of the seat than my side of the seat. Okay. And, and, and I just, I don't, from then, I mean, I, I, I think, I don't, I don't know for sure, um, but I, but I think I, I didn't, I didn't know that she was hurt at, at first. Okay. Um, and, and, and I don't remember, I don't remember, um, I remember seeing her realizing what, what was going on. When, she, when you first realized what was going on, what was it that you were realizing? That, 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 that she didn't say nothing at all. Mm -hmm. She didn't say nothing at all. And she, she, she thrashed. She was like thrashing a couple, to, I don't know, a couple, two or three times, I think. Mm -hmm. She did it more than that or not. Okay. And Where was the pipe when she was doing that? Sticking through the, it was, she was trying to get, I think she was trying to get away from the pipe. Okay. I, I, I think. Do you remember, do you recall, was it on the left side, right side? I don't know. I don't remember. Right. I, I don't, I don't, and, and, and I was trying to. I, 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 I don't know how or why I put the car in reverse. Um, but I, I put the car in reverse, to, and I got out to, to stop. I tried to stop, and I ended up. I put it in reverse somehow. I don't know what happened or how. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, I don't remember. I, 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 I don't know in the back of the car. I think. And I, I, I didn't lift her out. I don't think I lifted her out of the car. And I said, "Easy." I think how, I. How did you? How did you get her out of the car? I think I just yanked her out of the car. Okay. When you say yank, I, what? I, I don't know what that means to you, Mark. It doesn't, you know. But. I didn't. I didn't. I wasn't. I don't know for sure how I got her out of the car. Okay. I don't. I, I, I don't think I just lifted her nicely, though. Okay. I was... What do you think that you did? I don't know. I don't want to say. I don't know. Okay. I, I think I... What makes you think that you didn't take her out nicely? Because I needed to get... 
I needed to get her. She was. I needed to get her out and help her. Mm -hmm. And I was on the bank. I couldn't stand real good. It was up in the up in the bank a little bit. It was all wet and mud. And, yeah. And I got her out of the car. And I tried to get her head facing up the hill. I I I, I thought I knew CPR. I, I tried to clean her up a little bit quick before I did anything. And what, I what do you what? Clean her up a bit. What is? I just took my shirt. Okay. And she was bleeding out of her nose okay. and her eye, her mouth, mm. and her ears. And I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think at first to call. I didn't, I didn't think my phone. I didn't think, I didn't think of anything. I just, I just, um, I had trouble when I tried to. And I don't, I don't know for sure, but I think I had trouble with that pipe trying to get her out of the car, and that's why I ended up, I think I ended up, I think I ended up just yanking her out of the car and throwing the pipe. Okay. Did you get her out of the car? I got her out, and I did CPR on her. Okay. And then you got the pipe, or you got the pipe, you had to take the pipe out first, and then get her out I don't know for sure. I can't say. I, I think I. Once you got out of the car, did you leave her side? You were the priest. No, CPR I never left her side. I, so I, I, started, I started CPR, and then she was bleeding so bad. That's when I called. The, that's when I called the dispatch. Mm -hmm. And then I never left. I never. I never left the phone. I never left. I did CPR until the first responder got there. Okay. I, I never left her side. Um, I, I I just don't. I remember. I remember. And I don't know how how, how I did it or what I did it or what how, but um, I remember. I remember that, and that's why I was. And I don't. I don't think I was in the right state of mind when I did it. I didn't mean to do it, but. The pipe was, the pipe was there, mm -hmm. and I pulled her out, tried to get her out, and I ended up getting her head partially out, and her head fell down, and I, I pulled that. I don't know if I threw the pipe or what I did with the pipe, but ended up yanking that out of the way. Experiencing a traumatic event such as this one would understandably leave anyone in a state of shock, making it difficult to recount specific details of what happened. However, Todd struggles to recount even the most basic details of the crash, stating that he can't remember where the pipe entered the vehicle, what side it was on when the crash occurred, or the state his wife was in when the accident happened. He continues to violently shake his leg, speak almost incoherently, and seems to be on the verge of a panic attack while recalling the events that took place which can all be indicators to the detectives that Todd is hiding something. What do you mean her head fell down? I'm... She, she, when I tried to get her out of the car, the pipe was in the way, in the, not in the way, but sitting there. Okay. And, and her head, when, when I tried to get her out, I was trying to stand on that bank, and, and I just had so much, um, I just, I didn't, I didn't, I, didn't, I wasn't, I, I never thought I'd mean, I, I didn't, I just, I, I just, I, I just, I wanted to get her out to do C, to try to do CPR. Uh -huh. I didn't, I mean, I wasn't, I don't know why I didn't try to get her nice and soft or slow. It was because it was muddy or because I didn't, wasn't in the right state of mind or. So you said her head fell. Right? Her, her whole body kind of like, when uh -huh. I, when I tried to pull her back over. Uh -huh. Um, she fell out of the bank? Uh, she took me out of the car. Okay. And the door was wanting to shut. Okay. And the pipe was in there, sticking in there. And, um, I don't know if I, if I threw the pipe out of the way, make that out of the way, and then got it out of the door up first. Okay. So... The pipe was in the way. It, it was. It was. <clears throat> it was sticking in the windshield. Okay. Um, hanging down in the in the in by her. 
and um, I got her. All where it was hanging. I, I, I don't remember. I don't. I, 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 all I know is when I got out, I, I, I didn't know how bad she was. If it was how bad she was hurt, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to. In, in our in our first aid CPR, we we I'm on that work every year. I'm, I'm on the team. Um, I didn't know if she had a head and neck or whatever, so I kept I kept hitting her, tapping her, pounding on her between breaths, trying to get her to, to talk or answer or say something. And then the breast I don't remember somewhere in the in the chest or mm -hmm. somewhere in the in the somewhere I didn't I didn't know if she was hurt in the head or. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's when you had her on the side. That's when I had her outside on the on the on the in the grass or in the ditch, whatever you want to call it. Okay. All right. Let's backtrack a little bit. So we're looking for the description of the truck. Um, and. What do you recall about that truck? Do you remember where you were on the road? Any proximity to turning off onto Bergen Cooley? Uh, what the truck looked like? What you can recall on that? It was in 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 when we we talk and and stuff when we drive. So um, I, I all I can remember it was like a darker, like a two thousand era, um, like. A, and I don't know if it was a Ford or a Chevy or Dodge. I don't know if it was a darker colored. Mm -hmm. um, all I remember is the back had like a like a flatbed with sides on it. Um, I, I didn't even look at that. I mean, I, I don't even know what. Um, I couldn't I couldn't tell you exactly what. Like I said, I wasn't looking at the truck to see what. You know, I I, I don't know what. Where was the object? Which would have been the pipe the, when you first saw it? Um, right, right. It looked like it was probably right next to the truck. And it must be one of right, just because I wasn't looking at the truck when, when it came at us, or you know, I seen it down the road, and we just kept talking, and 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 um, and I didn't even mean. You know, if, if I didn't know what it was, and think nothing. I mean, mm. um, didn't have any clue or what. I mean, okay. When you first saw that object, what went? What were you thinking? Well, you know how you burn swallows or whatever, and burn sure. and you're driving all this kind of That's See, the reason I'm asking is because sometimes that, if you can remember what you were thinking at the time, that might give you a flash to what the truck looked like. So I'm trying to drive back to that. And and all I can all I can I mean. Um, it was a darker, like a like a, a dark green or a dark charcoal, or like mm -hmm. that. Um, and Could you recall if there was a, a... Now the detectives have shifted the conversation away from what happened to Todd's wife to the description of the vehicle, Todd slightly drops his defensive posture and begins to occasionally make eye contact with the detective. This could be because he no longer has to recount the events that caused the death of his wife and give him a moment to shift his attention to something else. A large load in the back of it? Or anything I, you, I don't know. Like that was pulling a trailer, not pulling a trailer? It wasn't pulling a trailer. Okay. Um, and, and as far as a, dark, a, a large load goes, um, he had something in there because it, it had to come off the top of the... It, it was up higher on where it came off the truck. Um, the truck wasn't that wasn't that tall. Just the truck itself. So you think you're, what makes you think that it was coming up? Because it wasn't it wasn't down here when I first seen it. Okay. Um, it was it was up. Um, it's not like it come off the bottom or the side of the truck. It it, it had to come off the top of the truck. Okay. It, it 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 didn't come off the. Um, I, I, I have trucks and the whole stuff, and, and there, there was no way it, it was a, it was a, the head of something in there. I don't know what or how. I, I didn't even I mean, um, I mean, just, I mean what, 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 what happened, I mean, just went so fast. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, I, I don't know, if I went into a, I don't know, I don't, I don't 
Um, I tried to remember it that day, and I, I, I knew and back out a couple of times to the site just to try to, we took some flowers and stuff out. And, once his wife is brought up again, Todd immediately goes back into a defensive posture, shifting his focus back to the events that occurred. In almost every case where the suspect is guilty of the crime committed, these subtle body language cues often signal to investigators that the suspect has something to hide. In the case of Todd Kenhammer, his erratic movements and peculiar body language was almost an immediate giveaway that what he recalled doesn't correlate with the events that actually took place. Um... I think you, and this is the, does that look about accurate right mm -hmm. there? Okay, so you're traveling from here to this direction. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, can you, sometimes looking at pictures help you? I know you're out there to see, but there's also looking at a still picture might help. It was, so, it was right the driveway, just after this, right by or right after this driveway. Okay. And that's where the, that's where the pipe came through the wind, or that's when you first yep. noticed it? Yeah. Okay. And I... I can't remember if this guy was outside or not. It seemed because my wife's classmate lives right back here. Mm -hmm. And we always have to see if Matt's outside when we go by. I, I, I can't remember if this guy was outside or not. Okay. I, 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 I don't remember for sure. He might, he might have been outside. Was there a lot of traffic that day on him coming in? No. Or not that I mean, um, it, 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 when I was down here, um, I don't know if anybody went by or not. And you ended up? Nobody would come and help me. You ended up right in? Probably somewhere and right in here. Okay. How long do you think it took you to get from your house to this point here? Probably, um, I don't know, 10 minutes maybe. Okay. Um, how long do you think it would take from that point to get into West Salem at the intersection of M and 16? Probably 12, 15 minutes. Okay, so we're just looking at the, the time and video stuff that we want to... You know, I mean, it, it's... Um, if you're driving at, at, at 50, 50, yeah, probably 50, 45, because there's some turns there you got to make. Um, and then, yeah, so all of it, when you get into, into town, um, I, I would say probably 12 to 15 minutes. Okay. Okay. I guess I didn't ask. Where you were heading, this is north. You're heading north to. Yeah. And where were you guys, where were you guys going? I was going over to talk to a, a guy I work with. I got a, I ordered a windshield for him about a month ago. Mm -hmm. And my wife has been after me to get it out of my garage. It's sitting in my garage. Okay. And we were going to just go out over there quick and. So that's what you do on the side. You do some window we, windshield work. We, we do. We do. Together. We do. We, I pick him up the other day and then. When she would get done work at two o'clock, and she would help me set the windshield, and we'd we'd take them back. Okay. I've done glass for 20, sure. 26 years, and so we just, as a tinker, little side job, we do it together. Okay. So you drive up there together. You would you change it right there? No, well, I would pick the vehicle up and go home, and I'd get it all ready. I'll get it because you have to have two people to set the windshield. Okay. And then she would help me set the windshield, and then we'd take it back at night. It's got to be kind of a pain. Huh? And go get to ice cream or something. What, uh, is one windshield different than the other, or more difficult than others, or? No, I um, but I mean, it's not, it's not, I mean. Notice that the detective scoots closer to Todd to show him a map of where the accident took place, asking him to recount placement of the scene. A detective's decision to move closer to a suspect during an interrogation can have several potential reasons, both positive and negative, depending on the context and the detective's intentions. In some cases, the detective might aim to build trust and connection with the suspect by closing the physical distance. This could create a more conversational and less intimidating atmosphere, encouraging the suspect to feel comfortable talking openly. 
Moving closer can allow the detective to observe the suspect's nonverbal cues more closely. This can provide valuable insights into their emotional state, body language, and potential attempts at deception. After finishing recounting the events with Todd, he attempts to momentarily switch the subject to Todd's work, once again in an attempt to build rapport with him. Despite the calm demeanor, passive approach, and willingness to build rapport with Todd, Todd shows absolutely no signs of dropping his defensive posture or calming himself down to speak coherently to the detectives. It's a little bit harder to set because they're bigger and she's not very big, but okay. my son would help me if they were too big for her. Well, was, was this a big one or not? A, no, not this was just a Ford pickup. Ford pickup. Okay. And that's typically, that's how it would work. You, you guys would drive to wherever you'd pick up the vehicle and bring it back to your house and work on it there? Unless they bring it up. Oh. Sometimes people bring them up. Okay. It just depended what it was. And this one's been there so long, it's, she's just bugging me to get it out of there. And we went over the night before just to drive by and see if he was home, and he wasn't. So, so who's, who's, what's, he, what's his name? Um, um, Justin Heimer. Okay. So Justin Heimer, and he works with, you say he works with him? I work with him, yeah. He's, oh, I get... I got all the glasswork I could do if I want it down through a crown. Yeah. There's there's always somebody's buddy or somebody that needs a, a windshield. Okay. And this was Justin's. Okay. Um, um, how banged up are you? Beside, I mean, you got some cuts there. I assume you got some. And uh, I, I had a little bruise on my legs, all I had. Okay. Where, what was that from? I'm, I'm assuming from the shift and that, I don't know. I'm okay. assuming it was from that when I jumped over to her side. Okay. Um. Do, you know, <clears throat> do you know about how fast you were going? The flight we normally go probably through there. Probably we don't super that stretch all up to the top of the hill is full of deer, so we normally don't fly through there. Um, we we're probably doing 45, maybe 50. I don't know, uh, maybe somewhere. I know we know because there's always deer from that first farm there where Hesselberg lives. There's always deer from there all the way up. Okay. Um, so I know we weren't, I know we weren't flying through there. Do you know, could you estimate the speed of the other? Oh, I couldn't tell you. I, I, I couldn't. I, it seemed I mean, real slow or real fast? Um, I, I couldn't tell you. Okay. I, I, I mean, I, I wasn't even looking. We, we, we always talk when we drive places and um, I, I, I couldn't even tell you. Okay. Do you recall any of the conversations that you guys were having, you and Barbara? Well, we're supposed to go up to we're supposed to go up to Warren's camp and after she got done work. And she was giving me she always gets right everything. Out, yeah. And she always gets everything all set out for me to load. So I can have it loaded when she's done work. And we can go. She was just giving me the what's what and where head be and who's gonna go what to with her. Because all the kids were coming up. So what time did you head up? Uh, what plan on heading out of town? Well, she'd get home at two, and then um, we finish the final touch. She'd usually do the bathroom stuff and like that, and then we'd go. Usually it's three o'clock. Yeah. It's every year we do every year. Mm -hmm. Every year we go up the week before Cran Fest, and, and then she's up there for Cran Fest. sell those crafts you're telling me about we don't sell them she just buys them for the hell we got she's got all kinds of different woodsy rustic crock pots and just um there's a big wood hatchet she found last year up there and we built it painted it and um just stuff like she always finds little stuff up there and then the big stuff she'll take a picture of and we'll come home and build it we got a friend that's got a a workshop in, in West Salem that he lets us use. And we'll go down there and build. 
we got three of them cabinets we built not too long ago down there. Just sitting there, I don't know what we're going to do with them, but. Um, Okay. Yeah. Nice. Can we call your hands all good? Cut up? This, I think, is from the windshield. Okay. How did that happen? I tried to, I'm assuming I must have tried to lunge for the pipe, I'm assuming. I don't know what else. I tried to, when I, when I realized what it was, I, I lunged over. Uh -huh. And forward, okay. And more so with this hand, because I was holding the wheel. With this hand, I always try okay. with one hand usually, but um. And how did they how did they get cut on the windshield? What's that? How did your hands get cut on the windshield? When Todd is asked what happened to his hand, Todd is unsure how to answer the question. He assumes it happened while attempting to dislodge the pipe from the windshield, since according to him, he normally drives with his right hand. This wouldn't make sense in the context of the scenario though, since the left hand is the one covered in scratches. If Todd were attempting to dislodge the pipe while driving, he would have reached with his right hand since he's the driver. Reaching across the steering wheel with the left hand would have put them in far more danger than doing so with his right because in this case the passenger sits on the right. This was yet another indication that Todd was lying to them once again. Well, well, hands, you said on the windshield, I guess I'm not, I just, I'm, the glass was shattered or... I lunged, I lunged forward and over mm -hmm. to yeah. try and block it or stop. I don't know what... You hit the, you made, your fist came in contact My fist hit, the, yeah, I hit the windshield. Okay. And that's, I had that little bruise here, I think, because I, I, I mean, I must have laid over, tried to go over, but I don't, I don't, I'm assuming that's... I didn't know I had the bruise. Okay. It wasn't nothing that's... Um, there was nothing that... I, I don't know. I don't know what... I mean, I'm, I'm just guessing that that's what happened with my... with that. It wasn't a big... I don't bruise easy. And, and I'm assuming that that that's I mean from from when I from when I realized and I didn't know it was a pipe I didn't know what it was but I I I, I realized it was something that was going to come through the windshield and and after that I mean I just, I don't even remember turning onto the cooler hood or or how or why I got it in reverse um um. I don't, I don't remember any of that. I remember yelling at the first responder when we got there. They drove by me the first time. And I had it on speakerphone. And, and he, he, I remember him asking me what side of the Bergen Pool we were on. And I said, I said, I, I didn't say it very nice, I don't think. But, and then he got there and he just took his time getting out. And I, I yelled at him. I remember yelling at him. And then they took me away from there and they took over. So I'm just trying to maybe if we could walk walk through it just it, it went through the windshield. Can you tell me where each end of the pipe was at that point? I have no idea. Can you, can you I, I I don't I don't even remember what kind of pipe it was, how long of a pipe it was. Um, but each, each, there was two ends of the pipe, right? Is that right? Mm -hmm. There's obviously two ends to this pipe. Yeah. There was one end, where was that position? I, 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 outside the vehicle. It wasn't all the way in the vehicle. I know that. So it was half in and half out? Because when I tried, when I tried getting her out, I was dealing with the pipe. Okay. And at what point were you trying, when you were trying to get her out of the vehicle, where was the end of the pipe that was inside the vehicle located? Was it still on her, to her right, to her left? I think it was. Take your time. Breathe. Take a breath. You don't know. I know. I know. I know. I know. You did, and I know. And it's tough to talk about. Um. 
And again, detectives attempt to disarm Todd and get him to calm down, doing everything they can to let him know that they are only trying to talk with him about what happened. Both detectives have remained incredibly patient with Todd, giving him the opportunity to recall events to the best of his knowledge and to do so with a calm, polite demeanor. This is a prime example of how to correctly interrogate a suspect into giving up the information needed, regardless of how long it may take to get answers. You said it was kind of holding you up. Well, it was, it was, it was, I, I, I don't remember how, how, it I know I got, I know I got mad and you, once they tried getting her out, she, she got her somewhat out and the door kept coming shut. So I, I reached up through the door between the door and the thing and I yanked the pipe out. I don't know if I threw it or set it there or what I did with it. So did you yank it out through the door or through the windshield? I was I I pulled it from the outside, I think. Over the top of the hood. Kind I don't I, I I think I did. You're about behind the door. Because the door kept wanting to shut on me and she was and I was trying to get her out and, and I don't I don't remember I know the door was trying to go shut and and I, I Was she moving at all at at that point? No. Not at all. Not then. Okay. Nope. So where where did you where did you have to place your hands on her body to get her out of the car? I don't I'm thinking that most people given the position I wasn't there, that's why I'm asking. But would you would you grab her from under the arms or No, I didn't do it. I I don't think I did. I don't think I did. And that's, that's, I, I don't, I, I think my, my, I think my big, my, my, my main concern when she stopped moving was to get her out of the car and on the ground. I think I made her. I shouldn't do that, no. I didn't do that. What is he doing? I, I I I think I I think I maybe took her I might have took her around the neck with one hand and her leg with the other hand. Okay. But I don't I don't know, I don't think I did. Kind of like scooping her out, like No. No, I was I was in panic. Okay. I was in panic mode. So I I don't, I don't, I, I, I honestly can't tell you. I, I don't want to say, I don't know for sure. It just seems like I got her, I got her around the neck and the leg and, and lifted her out that way, but I don't know. I, I don't know, I can't, I, I've tried to, I've tried to, um. So like, when you say you think that you did it, the arm and the leg, so it would have been, like if you were sitting there, you would have been here, arm and leg, or? No, I don't know. I, I, I really honestly I can't. I don't know. I, I know I didn't. I know I. I know when I was sitting in the cop car. I know I didn't just press her and take her out. I said soft. I know I didn't do that. Because okay. I was. I was. What makes you? I've, I've, I've never. Why you say that? Why? I mean. Because I've that. never ever in 28 years. Never touched her or, or, or grabbed her or, or raised my voice with her, and and I was mad at myself for some reason. It had to be because of how I got out of the car. I've, I've never, we've never, we we don't, I don't, I've never, I've never been, um, and 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 I still think, I still think of how I got it. I, I just can't. I don't know how, but I, I know the door was in my way, and the pipe was in my way, and the, the bank was in the way, and, and all I could think of was the compression. You need to start compressions right away. When asked how Todd removed his wife from the vehicle after the accident, Todd begins denying any sort of abuse he may have inflicted upon her, which is completely irrelevant to what was asked. 
Both detectives begin looking at each other confused as Todd continues to insist he would never lay a hand on his wife and that he would never cause her any harm. This is certainly a guilty conscience beginning to spill over into the conversation, with just a simple misunderstanding of the detective's question giving the authorities more incriminating evidence against him. And I don't know, I just, my, my girl was to get her out of the car and when I didn't see she was bleeding like that. Do you know where the pipe, where the pipe struck her? I don't, I did not have a clue. But what was, you knew she was injured and she was not moving anymore. She, she, so. she, she was at first. Okay, yo. She, 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 and I don't know if she went sideways or forwards or, Okay. Um, so what was your understanding of her injury when you took her out of the car? When, 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 what when was I your primary concern? Her? To get her on the ground and, and doing compressions. Okay. And what did what did and you I, I did start did? compressions immediately either. Okay. Um, I, 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 I just, I just, I don't know. I, 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 I thought of my phone and calling this, then I'm on this batch and, 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 and and it wasn't I don't I don't think it was very long and I got my I started doing compressions and then as bad as she was bleeding I didn't know if that was right so I called dispatch then and dispatch should absolutely keep doing this compressions yeah what do you recall what point that she kind of went unconscious because she was flailing. When I turned on to the cooler road, I, I kind of I kind of turned abruptly, I think. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if she... I don't know if she hit her head then. It, it almost seems like she her. was coming... What do you mean, hit her head? It almost, it almost seems like when I turned, she, she came over towards me and I put my hand out her on her if I stopped her or what I did. Because um, I wasn't back in my seat all the way yet. I don't think I was all the way back in my seat. So when you turned, you, th you think she hit her head? I don't think she hit her head, not then, no. Oh, okay. So what? Uh, the, only, the only place she would hit her head is if it was if I reached out to catch her, because she would have been tipping. Okay. And I, 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 I was, and I, and I don't remember if she came over towards me or not. Okay. If she came over towards you, what would she have hit her head on? Nothing. I would have just caught her with my, you know, sure. my arm or my hand would have caught her, would have been all. She wouldn't, I don't think she would have hit her head on anything. So, at what, so she was, I think initially, but that she was kind of flailing, when the pipe came through, that you said that she was kind of flailing around a little bit. Right? Yeah. At what point did that stop and she just kind of go unconscious? When I turned, I think it was when I turned on the coolie roll. Because okay. that's when I, and she went flail a lot. Um, Describe. I mean, I guess I don't. Describe flailing. I guess I mean, I'm so we're on the same page, so so I know what you're talking about. Um, Can you kind of show us? No. Okay. Just, just like, like if you get hurt, if you get hurt. Was she saying anything? No. Say nothing. Nothing. Um. Scream, cry, just, or anything I, like that. Then, yeah, I don't remember hearing nothing. No. Um. She just, and I don't know if she went sideways or forwards or both. Um, her hands were gone and her feet were gone. And, and I, don't, I mean, I don't know if she went sideways or forward or, um, I don't know. I just know she was, she was just, and, and I wanted to get off the road and stop. Get off, I wanted to get stopped. And I don't know. I don't know how she if she was if she was going forward, back, or sideways. I know she was just. 
Do you recall what position, what position she was in when you were going to get her out of the car? She tried to push her back, lift her back into the, push her back into the car so I could get up and get the door open and get her back in. So you were inside the car trying to bring her back to you? Or no, I, I got out immediately. Okay, so when you opened the door, I was down. The, door, the passenger's door, you were down kind of in the ditch. Yeah. And she kind of fell out she, towards you? I think she fell out, you know, tipped down out, out of the car. Okay, and then, then, and the door came back down. Okay. The door didn't want sure, to open. Sure, yeah. The door came back down, and so then I, I, I went back up, and I got her. Climbed back up the hill towards the door, towards it the car. Yeah, it wasn't a big, I mean, well, it just enough of a hill. That, yeah, it's a ditch. Do you recall where the pipe was at that point? The pipe was still on the windshield. Okay. I think. So one one section was the windshield, whereas with the pipe, the amount that it entered in to the vehicle. How far? How far was it in? How far was it sticking out of the windshield? I, I honestly couldn't tell you what the pipe looked like. I, I grabbed it, and I don't know if I threw it or set it down. How much of it was hanging out of the I, windshield? I don't. I don't know. Um, but you were holding, you're standing on the on the, the the hill, the ditch line. You're holding the door open, and you took the pipe, and you took it out of the door. The passenger door would be right here on your side, and then you grabbed it, and you pulled it out, and then got her out? Or you don't? Um, I, 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 I don't remember how I got it. I, I, th I think, and I, and I don't remember for sure, but I think when I when I first got over there and opened the door, and she she kind of rolled out, mm -hmm. but she didn't come all the way out. Um, um, I think the door came back down. Door tried to close. Tried to close, and, and it hit her. Mm -hmm. Do you know where it hit her? I don't know for okay. sure. She was. All right, so that. I think she was mostly out of the car, but I don't know. Okay. When you were getting her out, were you pulling the pipe out, or did you go back and pull the pipe out? When I got her out, you got I went her back to see what 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 hit her. What was what was. Um, I, I wasn't even. Um, I guess I don't even know if I knew what what hit her or what. Okay. Um. And I, I, I went back. I thought my phone was in the car. Normally, I don't keep it in my pocket. And her phone was in her purse. And I, I went back to see what hit her. And I must have been going to get my phone or something. And I yanked the pipe out. And I don't know if I threw it or set it there or what I did with it. Okay. And so where were you when you yanked the pipe out? Standing beside the car. On the drive, the passenger side of the car there. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if I was. And do you recall how much of that pipe or where? I it? I don't I mean, I I honestly don't. I I, I I don't I don't remember what. Like I said, I'm just trying to put pieces here and there together. Sure, absolutely. And I just I I, I was. Um, I was, I, I just had no, um, I had, I had no, um, I, I just, I don't, I, I just had a feeling I didn't take her out of the car tonight, so I wanted to get her out of the car. Okay. Did she have her seatbelt on? Just, did you have to take her seatbelt off to get her out? I didn't have to, but she 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 always wears her seatbelt. She always wears her seatbelt. I don't remember taking it off. Okay. So, but she 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 always wears her seatbelt. Okay. Every no matter if we're going down to per trip or down to get ice cream, um, it's the first thing she does is put her seatbelt on every time. But I don't remember taking it off. 
I remember something, something, something catching or, or something, something when she was caught on something or something getting out of the car. I don't know what it was, and I don't remember how or what happened with it, but um, I just, I just, I, I pulled. To get her out. To get her out. Okay. And was your, your phone was in your pocket? You said. It was in my pocket. And, and, and where was, you said her, her phone was in her purse. Yep. Where was her purse? I don't know if it was on the floor or in the back seat or where it was. Okay. She always had a, a, a water. Um, every time we went in the car somewhere for a ride or something, I'd have to make her a big water, mug of water. I know she had that with her. In her, in her lap or in her hand or somewhere with her. Okay. okay. And you're going up north. We were supposed to leave that Friday afternoon. Okay. The family and we have a whole bunch of cousins and it's a yearly thing we do every year. Hmm. We've done it for 26 years. Um, we went up the weekend before Cran Fest, and then she takes off. This week she went to Friday off to go up, and we were walking. I fished the cranberry rocks. This week or la last week? This week. Okay. I mean, she'd take Friday off. She was and working. She was working last. Was going to be working last yeah. Friday. And she gets done at two. Yeah, two or two thirty. It depends what time she goes in. Okay. What time does she go in? Oh, well, it's either eight or eight thirty. So and, and, and Fridays are pretty pretty lenient as far as if you come in a little late and leave, leave a little earlier. And every year for Cranfest we always go up and she goes down to the boots and then I'm fishing and she calls and says what she finds and I gotta ride the bus down and have her get it. And Cranfest would have been this but this weekend. This weekend. And that's why I'm making this heart for Back. Say that again. I'm just making a little crap thing. That's what I was when you called. Oh. To have some idea of kind of the, you said that you thought the house between like seven seven forty five, maybe so we can kind of jog your memory. It was it was probably it was it was probably quarter to it was closer to eight. Usually maybe quarter to eight or so. Okay. Um, seven, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't, um, we never leave that early. It was probably quarter to eight, maybe somewhere 20 to eight. You mean we never leave that? Well, um, I take her to work a lot okay. when I'm off. All right. Um, and after she's done work, if they got a shitty, shitty lunch that day, we'll go grab something for lunch when she's done work. Okay. So um, that day you weren't taking her to work? I was taking her to work yeah. if the truck wasn't there. If we couldn't get the drop, I would take her to work, and then I just pick her up after work okay. with the camper, and then we go. Okay. This is how we always do. Anytime we're camping and she's got to work, um, I'll take her at work in the morning, and then I have her in the night. She has a list of what I just got to load in the camper, hmm. and then on the way down, I pick her up from school, and we go. Okay. So we don't have her car sitting there all, all weekend. And that was the plan for that day. Well, it was. It was. She was coming home this day. Because we had we had too much other stuff to load up, and we made a big thing of chili, and we had all the kids going, so we put extra bedding and stuff in. Okay. So she was she was we weren't leaving right from school that day. She was coming home. After school, she was coming home. Yeah, I was gonna go on and get her with the car and okay. and take her back home. So if the truck was there, where was where does the he would have just came in and got where, it. Where is just is it Justin? You said yeah. Where does he the well, he lives over by, I think, a long coulee. Okay. Um, but the, the truck was supposed to, I don't know, um, I think he lives in long coulee. But he's got trucks, he's got trucks all over the place. He does tractor work and mechanic work. Okay. And so he'll get a, a mechanic job that he does at a house, and then he'll call me and say, this vehicle needs a windshield. Okay. And, and that's why I ordered it. It's been, like I said, it's been sitting in my garage for... <laughs> A month, I bet at least, okay. and and Barb's been just bugging me to get rid of it, and 
Where did you go the night before to look for the truck? We just went up through Home Ed, out along Cooley, and up over the hill to Mindoro. Did you go to his house? We did not go to his house. He wasn't home. No, no. Um, it, it, it's, uh, it's, it's been, like I say, probably a month since he's told me where the truck was. Um, Are you going to call him? To... I tried to call him. Okay. Um, well, on, on Thursday, or when did you try to call him? No, I haven't, I haven't called him for... Um, oh gosh, it's been, it's probably been a month, maybe, I don't know. Okay. Um, I, I just, um. But you didn't, when you had this, you, Barb was kind of giving you a hard time about getting this, she, getting she, this done, she, getting she, this she's, out of here. And she's, um, she's yeah. very adamant with, with her, our garages. She wants them clean and we're in need. Sure. And, and. I, I tend to slack a little bit and get stuff in there piled up and um and she's she's worried she's gonna break that windshield. So she's been she's been bugging me to get rid of it and she had the garage all cleaned up and everything ready to go over the dump. But that windshield she didn't want to move or mess with and and I just haven't been I haven't been too I moved it from we have an attached garage and a detached garage. Mm -hmm. And I moved it from the attached garage to the detached garage now. And she started, she got the attached garage all cleaned up. And she wanted, she went and moved it over to the other one. And now she was going to start cleaning that one. So that's in the detached garage? Is that the, the windshield is, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's sitting up there in the garage and it's been there for, it's been there for quite a while. And Where do you get your, your windshields? Glass on wheels. Okay. Um, yeah, and you said you're going out to look for the truck two times, or but, but just yeah. I don't get too worried about it. Uh, sure. When he when he has a glass job, it's usually a um, it takes you a week or two to get sure. a hold of a guy, whoever it is, and or to find him to call you. And how many jobs you done for 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 him? Well, I've got him. This will be the first time I'm actually doing for him. Um, I mean, like I say, he's kind of a. Um, goes to farms and stuff and works on tractors and trucks and stuff and on his off time and and he always he'll call me with one but the people never pull through with it or and this one's the same thing. I, I ordered it normally I haven't ordered them until I talked to the people and I was ordering a bunch of other ones so I ordered this one with it. So he called you and said I got one for you and told you what do you what do you order? Yes, yeah. So what you you said you were gonna find his truck and the keys were in it? That's what you told me. Well, I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna try to get the which, key. Which one of those trucks were you gonna do? What, 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 what do you mean? I mean, if you're gonna look for the truck, what truck were you looking for? Well, he'll, 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 like, if, when he works on a truck of mine or when somebody at works, he'll be in the driver with the keys in it. Okay. And you just yeah. go pick it up whenever you. Which truck was that that you were supposed to pick up? It's a Ford pickup, F 250 pickup. Okay. Is what the windshield's for. I haven't seen the truck yeah. yet. Okay. Maybe I didn't understand yet that you said he had a lot of trucks, so. He, Justin does, yeah. He's got a lot, but this wasn't for his personal. I don't think it was. If it would have been for his personal truck, I would have got it already. I've seen him at work and I it up. But you didn't drive by his house on Thursday? No, we did not drive by his house. Okay. Um, I, I, I was under the understanding it was a, um, and, and I, maybe I'm completely off, I don't know, but. Um, right over the shuffle by hill, um, there's a, a house right at the bottom on the right. And that's where I was under the understanding that the truck was. How did you get to that understanding? Just by people at work, driving people at work. And... What, I, how do you, how are people at work going, I'm not following that. I, I'm the glass guy at work. Sure. If somebody needs a windshield or somebody's friend needs a windshield, they call us. Mm -hmm. um, and Justin's known to be a, well, I set this up and do it, and then nobody ever, it doesn't go through. Mm -hmm. um, so. Uh, How many times have you set it up and not gone through with him? I haven't, I haven't said it. I just, I ordered it when he said about it. Because um, okay. I was ordering other ones. If I, the more I order, the better price I get on them. Okay. And, and it's a windshield that there's, there's several of them vehicles around. I knew if he didn't crawl through it, I could get rid of it. And I just haven't, um, with, with, with me, my wife and I have been remodeling our kid's house. And 
and with this camping weekend coming up, we just haven't, I haven't messed with it at, at all. Um, so going back to just the timing, um, just so we can kind of compare you know, basically timestamps on the video to, to, to what we're, we're asking here. Um, you said that sometimes she doesn't have to go to kind of lax on the time that she shows up for work. Does she have to call somebody and report that? Or no, if she's if time? she's not there by 8.30, then she has to be. Um, if she's not there by 8.30, then she's got to call and let them know. Okay. okay. If it can be after 8.30, because they have to start breakfast at 9 o'clock. So Friday, where were you, you're, you're going to Holman, where were you going and what were you going to? I was just going over to that house right there at the bottom of the hill. You weren't going to go to? Hammers, no, I wouldn't make it with her for, for work. Not that early. We would have had to leave a lot earlier. So she was all dressed ready to go in case you found the truck? Yeah, and she was going to work from there. Okay. But I took her and took the car back home. Or she went to work with the car. Okay, so she wasn't going to stop back home for she no, work. No, for everything. She had her water, and she we were all ready to go. Okay. Um, we had a phone call to her mom, and with everything, um, it's a normal day of work. Okay. I talked to Justin. Okay. He had never had any, you do any work for him. I told you, I never did a windshield for him. Mm -hmm. um, did he tell you that, or that he had an F-250 pickup from somebody in, in Holman or, or the, one of the, two, the, the hill or Medora Hill or the Holman Hill? Back in May. Okay. And then what did he tell me? What did he tell you? I don't know. And then he told me that um, the guy he had was busy. When he finally called back, you said that you had sold it. It's sitting in my garage. The windshield's sitting in my garage. Okay. I, 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 I don't have any windshields but the ones that I do. Are you guys insinuating that I did this to my wife? Once the detective informs Todd that he spoke with Justin to confirm Todd never did the work he claimed to have done leading up to the event of Barbara's death, Todd immediately becomes defensive, questioning their motives and left with the impression that they're insinuating he was responsible for Barbara's death. The detective hasn't made any assumptions regarding this whatsoever and is simply cross-examining his information with what Todd has told them so far. To the average person, Todd would have no reason to become defensive like this if he weren't guilty of the crime committed, especially considering how innocuous the statement was. I'm not seeing you anything at this point. I'm saying that Justin is saying that there wasn't a, a, a windshield order. He didn't talk to you. He hadn't seen you in about a month. And, and so I told you, it's been at least a month, maybe, I, I, I'm just guessing a month, but I, sure. I'm... I'm not changing my story. I'm 100%. I'm not, I'm not saying you are. Um, I'm, I'm 100%. I'm just telling you that any time that somebody dies, whether it be a traffic accident, some, some, there's obviously a lot of questions. And if we just okay. take, take the first person, one person's word for it when they're under right. stress, yep. Yep. that's why we're here today is just to kind of clear things up yep. and uh, try to get answers to some of those other questions. Obviously, as time goes by, more questions come up. and. Yep. And uh, we wouldn't be doing our jobs if we don't yep. don't look into it thoroughly. So. Yep. And that's why I can when you when you called, I I I I, I want to get this um for Barb. Sure. Yeah. So there are some other. I I think that uh, uh, representative of the medical examiner's office spoke to you briefly. Um. Sandy. Some. Sandy. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know her at all? I, I know her daughter. Okay. My my daughter went to school with her, her daughter. Okay. Would she I, tell you about anything they found out? She didn't say, um, she didn't say, oh, there were so many people there that 
um, she didn't say a whole, she just, um, she, I don't even know if she really said anything. Um, um, trying to think of what we talked about. To her neck or her head or something, somewhere. She did say something that they were questioning or wondering. Okay. Do you recall what that was? You said neck and head. Well, I can't remember if it was her neck or her head. Or lower and lower. And I don't. I don't. I know. She. She had mentioned something, but it. I mean, it didn't. Um. It. It didn't mean I. I wasn't. I guess concerned or paying attention with it. Okay. Um. I. I. I honestly didn't think it was going to be a. Um. You know anything? I mean that. That. Would but be a, a, a back on me or, or I mean um, I, I like I said I didn't know what how she got or what she got or how bad extensive it was or um, um, I remember talking to her about um, after they got burnt, cleaned up by seeing some spots on her chest and 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 I mentioned to Sandy I said I thought maybe. That that was from me poking, trying to wake her up, trying to get her to respond to me. Okay. I remember telling Sandy that. Okay. And there were some injuries there, so um, you can kind of explain it. But but I don't remember. She did mention something else, but it wasn't anything that pertained to me, so I didn't even. Okay. Um, you know. What do you mean? It wasn't anything that pertained to you. That that it was part. I mean, I I I, I when I seen her chest. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of figured, I kind of thought that that was from me. And how are you, when you said, you, how would that have occurred, that you, if you did that, what was the mechanism that you were I, I didn't want to hit her and shake her like, you know, mm -hmm. bar, bar, because when, when, you're, when you're doing the CPR, and I didn't know if she had a neck or a head or how bad. Sure. So I, I just kept tapping her, trying to get her between, between compressions. Okay. Um, trying to get some kind of a response or something. I didn't want to move her head as much as possible. Okay. And so I, I, I knew, I mean, I had a real good idea that that, that was from me. Um, um, did you make any attempts to stop any bleeding or just make I didn't, any concern with the seizure? I didn't, I didn't do any. I just, I just, um, my, my biggest concern was getting the, the, the compressions in. Sure. To try it. I mean, that's that's a. Um, it wasn't like it was gushing blood, um, so I didn't. I, I didn't. Um, the thing they always taught us was get the compressions going, keep that blood going, and mm -hmm. um, and and so that's what I did. I I, I concentrated on that. Okay. Um, Were you bleeding a lot? No. No. Just had the injury on your hand. Yep. And that wasn't. Um, that wasn't. You had some on your on your neck. That was from. I'm assuming that was from when I was trying to. I was sweating so bad, mm -hmm. and I was trying to keep the sweat from running down all over. I'm assuming it was from. I don't know. It was, it was, by, by keeping the sweat off, what, what do you mean? I was just, I had so much sweat around my eyes and, 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 and down me. Sure. Um, and I just, I was trying to keep it off, trying to keep the sweat away on my eyes. And how, stuff. how are you doing that? With my hand. Okay. Like between compressions and. Okay. So you scratched, you were scratching yourself? Well, I don't think I scratched myself. Okay. Then what, do you know how you got the, the scratches there? I don't know. Okay. I, it wasn't. It couldn't have been from me. Okay. Um, there, there's. I mean, that wouldn't have been from me. Were they there before that? Did you have scratches on your body before the accident? No, I had one here. Okay. Is it still there? But nothing. Okay. No, that's, that's just pimple. Okay. Yeah. How about your neck? Can we look at that too? Yeah, there's. It's, they're it's not clean. Okay. No, and, and I don't I mean 
Um, so we're just trying to figure out kind of what the dynamic inside the vehicle was. Okay. So I don't know if you remember the hospital. We took some pictures of those. Yeah. And I think there's yeah. That's the other side of your neck. Okay. And then on your chest too. See, they're not there anymore. Yeah. No. And, and this one was. Um, I don't know how I got that one, but you don't know how you got that one. I don't remember if if we were. Um. I don't remember. I don't remember honestly. If you were. The detective is now asking Todd to recall what occurred inside the vehicle leading up to the accident and hands him several photos of injuries that were present on his body at the time of the crash. They ask Todd if he can recall how these injuries on the back and sides of his neck appeared since the pipe appeared on Barbara's side of the vehicle and wouldn't have caused scratch marks to appear on Todd's neck. Once again, Todd is unable to recall details about the specifics of what went on inside the vehicle, further delaying the inevitable by stalling the investigation. Started said if we were. Uh, well, we've been putting tree stands, getting tree stands ready and okay. mowing trails and stuff. Yeah. What about these? I don't know. I honestly can't tell you. I know they're not from me. Okay. I, 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 I mean, you, you know, you're the, I guess that's, like, I, you know, they're not from you. I mean, I didn't, I didn't do it with my hand or like that or, okay. um, um, I, I don't know. Now that you're not sure how that one happened. I, I, I think I had that before the accident. Okay. I think. Because I, I, I don't know. And how did that happen? I don't know. I honestly don't. I mean. When did you first realize, when you first noticed you had that? When you guys asked about it. When we took the picture at the hospital? Yeah. Well, no. Yeah. Or, yeah. I didn't. I mean, I'm, I get scratches and cuts and. and so, how, so you didn't notice that you had a scratch there? No, I didn't know it. But no. you're pretty sure it happened before the accident. I don't know. I can't say. If, 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 I'm, if, if you guys aren't... We're, set, we're just there, trying to straight, straight 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 boundaries. Out. I'm, and I'm honest. Okay. Um, I, I, Help us explain the injuries. I, I, I can't. I can't explain them. I, I told you I, I don't understand. Um, I don't understand those injuries. I don't. Neither do we, and that's why we need your help. Because um, the the mechanism, your injuries, we're not we're not talking about. We're talking about the injuries on Barbara. Right. And the mechanism in which was described by you isn't consistent with those injuries happening. Those it's improbable and, and for those injuries to happen because there's too many different planes. There's something that happened and, and, before the accident. And 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 and. Something went wrong. Something no, went wrong. haywire. No, I did not. I did, I've never gone haywire. I've just never. Just I've, I've never gone. From what we see here is, you know, the scratches on your neck kind of indicate that maybe somebody is trying to defend themselves, and which tells which tells us that this wasn't something that anybody planned out. It may have been an argument that any married couple could get into got out of hand. We don't. We we. She we, didn't. She didn't die really. She didn't die until she got to the hospital. We, we didn't. No. 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 Absolutely not. We have. I, we have if there's I, a way to explain it, now would be the time to do it. I, I don't know how. I don't, something got out of hand. There's nothing that got out of hand with me. There's nothing that got out of hand with me. The injuries around her neck are consistent with being choked. I, okay, and I never choked her. Okay. I never. I, there, but, uh, <laughs> How, how, I mean, I've got, I've got. Todd, you got to gotta stop for a second. Take a breath and relax, okay? I can't. I know it's tough, but let's let's try for a second, okay? The injuries on Barbara did not occur by a pipe coming through the windshield. You were driving in the car with Barbara before the pipe came through the windshield off of the truck. She had no injuries at that point, is what you're trying to say. And we're saying that those injuries had to have occurred sometime prior to that pipe coming through there. Because the pipe didn't come off the truck, and I think you know that, too. Oh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. You know, no. they didn't happen that way, Todd. The injuries aren't consistent. There's no way that those injuries occurred that way. 
There's injuries to the back of her head. There's injuries to her neck. There's injuries to her nose. There's injuries to her forehead. There's injuries to her jaw. There's all these different injuries that didn't occur. The pipe didn't go bing, 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 you put patient or down on the sidewalk and performing CPR is not going to cause any kind of injuries that we're talking about. Those aren't going to happen. It's not going to happen that way, Todd. You know that that's not going to happen. You're trying to explain some of the things away, but the, the problem is that we can't. You can't explain some of those away. The detectives are starting to slowly inform Todd of what they know about the case, stating that the injuries on Todd's body are not consistent with the accident, but rather a struggle. Detectives know that based on the scratches on his neck, hand, and back, there was some sort of struggle between Todd and Barbara, either during the drive or shortly after the car fell into the ditch. Despite Todd's newfound awareness of what the detectives have discovered since opening this case, as expected, he continues to deny causing any harm to Barbara. I, 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 I don't... I, 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 I can't. I, I don't know what happened. I, I, I can't explain it. I, I, I mean, there's... there's um, you ever blacked out? No. no. Not that I know. Not a big drinker or anything like that? No. I drink brandy once in a while, yeah. but not, I mean, I'm not an alcoholic or... Something happened before you got out of my car. It, it, I'm, I'm telling you. I'm looking at you. Okay. Then help me explain these injuries. I, I, I don't know how to explain them. I don't... I, 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 Give me a... Th I, well, there's the injuries to the nose. What, there's how, injuries to the mouth. How, how old there's, can I uh, there's a the nose? Her nose is broken. Like sideways, like in, it's like how, how? It's broken. There's no cuts to it. It couldn't be from a mug? With her, with her mug? The, the nose is broken. The lips are bruised. There's a cut across her forehead. There's injuries here. There's injuries to the back of her head. But, but. There's no damage to your car. There's fractured skull. Why would it be damaged to my car? Well, if you're trying to explain that her head may hit the, the dash or her drink. It's nothing that caused the car to stop suddenly. Well, I think that would have been when I put it in reverse. And that's not going to have enough force to, to do anything. Because... Right. And, 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 um, the only possible thing that I can think of that when she, um, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I, I can't. I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a crime scene guy. I'm not no. a, you, you, um, you, but you, but you're not a crime scene that. person. But, but you were there. But, but if, if I if I if, if I was going to try to do something to my wife, I sure in the hell wouldn't have done it like this to put somebody through misery and pain like that. There's no way in hell I would have ever. Yeah. I've got fifty guns sitting in my cabinet. I've got so many things, that, and, and we had no fight. There was absolutely zero fight. We had absolutely nothing. Sometimes in, in moments of, of anger, they can turn into rage, and those things just all of a sudden, you know, yeah, you get guns and this there, but... It, I'm, I'm telling you, there was no anger, there was no rage. There was, I, I'm not an evil... Pipe, how, the pipe, how the pipe go through the windshield? What do you mean? How did the pipe get through the windshield? Let's start there. It, I, I don't, it came off the truck. I did not put that pipe through that windshield. I didn't say it did, but I'm saying how did it get through the windshield? I don't know. You kind of explained the physics of it. You kind of understood that, right? Yep. Okay. That it's just not going to stop and get stuck in the windshield at those velocities. There, there is, there is, there is absolutely with the granddaughter and my kids and my wife. And I understand that there's something, what, something snapped, something went no, you no, I don't, there's I don't something do that, that happened that, I know, you, and I'm not saying that you, you had made a practice of anything like this at all. I'm just saying that something snapped. No. And something happened. There you can a, try and get me to snap on that. What happened? I, well, I, I, help us explain. I wish I could. Explain to me. I honestly wish I could explain it to you. I honestly wish I could explain this to you. Because your your story about going to pick up a vehicle to do the windshield 
isn't that's a lie. It's not a lie. That's a complete lie. No, it's not. Yes, it is. You didn't go to you said his keys. You told him the keys are always in his car. He's always there. If you're gonna, if he's gonna have a truck, he's gonna have it parked at the driveway in his driveway. At Thursday, his house. Yes, and Thursday you drove uh, up there to pick up the car, but you never went by his driveway. You were looking around for it. You thought it was at Shuffleback, but you're driving around. Yes, uh, we were the other hill. Yeah, but you didn't go to his house to we, look we, for it. Yes, but it wasn't at his house. You said that that's where it would always be. No. Contact, how do you know where it was? It wasn't at his house. How do you know that? Tell me how you know that. Because it's not, it wasn't his truck. How do you know that it wasn't as You said if he has a truck for you to fix, it's always at his house. Whose house was it at? No, 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 no. I didn't say he, it's always at his. Whose house was that? I don't know the guy's name. So you're going to go look for a truck that's parked at an unknown person's house that might be over the backside of Shufflebine Hill. And if the keys are in it, you're going to take it? Yeah. You don't know who the guy is? There's a Ford truck up here. Really? Really? With, with, I do it all the time. I do it all the time. I've done, done, I've, I've done it for 26 years. So for 26 years, you'll have somebody call you and say, hey, I got a, a windshield for you to fix. It's my buddy's. Go pick it up. When I was where, in where, business. Where is it? When I was in business, no. Where is it? But now. Uh, it's at his house. Who's but, who is his buddy? But now with how we are, yes, I Who do. Is it. his, it's, that's not plausible. I, you, know, I, 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 you know that's not plausible. Todd has now been confronted about his first lie regarding what he had planned to do the day of Barbara's murder. Todd stated earlier in the interrogation that he was on his way to a customer's house to repair a broken windshield, while also on the way to a campsite with his wife. The detective had already canvassed individuals that Todd knew, including Justin, the man Todd said he was meeting with to fix his windshield, and confirmed Todd never responded to Justin to confirm the work, stating that the work was supposed to take place a month prior. Todd then begins to deny the claims the detective is making, contradicting nearly every statement that's made afterwards, and unable to make sense of his own whereabouts the day of the supposed accident. It's at this point the detectives begin to hammer down on his statements and present even further incriminating evidence against Todd. That's not where you're going that morning. Yes, it is. You haven't, I'm, I'm, you haven't talked to him for I'm, a long time. I'm not. You, he said that the only, so time, he, me, the only right? time that he had contact with you was back in May. Remember what, kind, remember what kind of windshield he told you to order? There was, there was a couple of them that he wanted. Oh, he told him about one. But, he said he's got a one. But, Do you remember what kind it was? I don't remember anymore. I got such no. a busy memory right now. You don't remember what kind he told you to order in May? Well, that F-250 was the one in the windshield that I ordered for him. Yeah, a month ago. Yeah. Okay, why would you order a month ago? Because that's when he talked to me about it. That's when I was all the other ones. In May. He talked to you in May about it. But he was, had this, this truck. I, I, there, you, there's, you told him that you, but it was a coincidence because you actually had one on hand. I sold that a long time ago from him from that, yep. the one I had on hand. And then he, then he never contacted you again about anything, ordered another one. Never did. Never, never had any conversation about where it was. He didn't talk to you about anything else. He, didn't, he never told you the guy's name. So your story about driving to Holman to get a, a pickup truck that you don't know where it is or anything about it other than it's a, a, a what was it? Sir. What was the vehicle? A Ford pickup. What kind of Ford pickup? F-250. Okay. And that's that's what you're going to go do. You're going to drive around on the day that you're going to go camping. you got all the stuff to get ready to go. You do it all your the time. Gonna, your wife's going to be driving. All the time. I, you don't do it all the time. We, we, you don't do that all the time. Okay. All the time. You, all the time. So I'm going to contact you and say, I've got a, a cracked windshield. Can you get me one? Yep. Okay. I'm either going to bring it to your house to have it fixed or you're going to come to my house to have it fixed. That's what you said before. Yeah. This is you're just on a wild goose chase driving around Holman trying to find an F-250 or a Ford yeah. pickup truck someplace yeah. around Holman that you didn't find. No. You also said... If it's if it's gonna have it fixed, he's gonna have it at his house, and the keys are in it because he always leaves the keys in it. In his truck, yes. Yeah. What's his house look like? It's an old farmhouse. Okay, where? Back at the end of a coulee. Okay. Got jumped over. How many times you been there? Once. Okay. So so. Well, how do you? When were you there? Once. Oh God. It's been. He's supposed to be doing some work on my son's tractor. He did work on your son's tractor. He he didn't do work. He did the heads for it. Yeah. He my did. son took him there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Your son took the head that to his house? Yeah. Okay. 
And yeah. you've been there how many times? Just once. Uh, when was that? That's, yeah. I don't know, a long time ago. Okay. Um, but if you're going to do work for him and do windshields, he's, you said he's always going to have his truck in the driveway with keys in it, but you haven't done work for him, so you wouldn't know that. His his truck is always in the truck, yes. How do you know that? He's, he te he tells me that. Tells he's that having his normal conversation, you know, by the way, I always leave my keys in my truck in there in my driveway. I know a lot of people that do. I, I know a lot of people that do, too. I don't know a lot of people that just in the middle of a conversation, blurt out and say, I always do that. I, I have um, quite a few friends that tell me that in case something ever comes up or... So, so... You're so, gonna, you're gonna, your wife's gonna get done, let's go to the, your wife's gonna get done at 2.30 on Friday, okay? And you aren't gonna leave directly from school because she's got a lot of packing to do. Wait, some to finish, yep, yeah. so we got a lot of packing to do. Yeah, and it was raining. Yep, and it was raining. So you're not gonna leave it too good. She gets done at two thirty. She gets done at two thirty. It's gonna take her a period of time to get home. So you're looking at three o'clock. Yep. Then you gotta pack. Yep. You gotta do all kinds of stuff. Yep. So now you're you looking at up and you're wondering how I'm gonna get to work, right? You're not gonna get to work. Right. You know you're not gonna get to work. Yep. You're never late. Yeah, I am. Oh. I'm I'm no. I've got several points on you're, my attendance you're record. Pretty pretty good employees according to them. No, I've got five points Why in my... Why tell me that? I can, I can prove it. Prove what? Okay, that I've got five points. I can't do five points. You're not, you're not going to make it back in time for work I at 6.30. You're not going to make it back by... And I'm, and I've got time. days to call in for sick days. You didn't call in sick. I don't you have to call the last because, day. But so, so... You haven't called in sick. You called in sick five times this year. Only. Only. That's no. pretty good for me. That's really good. So, That's really good for an employee of Crown Court Conceal. That's yeah. what they told me. Well, not not with our time's policy now, but, but no, they're telling. That's what I I talked to them. They told me you're good. You're very good in tenants. You're not. That's not an issue. Good employee doesn't complain a lot. Yeah. So you're so, not going to make it back. You're not going to make it back in time for work. Right. And I have called in several times. Mm -hmm. I do it. At least five times a year for stuff like this. <clears throat> Every other year for Crown Fest, when when my day don't fall in. You've always taken the day off. And we don't have trades anymore. Did you ask him that? We don't have trades schedule, anymore. Take schedule, the day off. Schedule vacations. You can't. And my vacations are done. You can't get a vacation in August, September. I'm too low on the pole to get a vacation. They told you they were giving you a day off to make the transition to uh, third shift or to night shift. Right. You didn't take it. I didn't need it. One day wouldn't help me. No. Mm -mm. Give me a time that so you were gonna call in sick instead. One mm -hmm. day would have helped you perfectly. One day would have fit in perfectly. You're gonna be running around. You're gonna be late. It's going to work at six thirty. Your wife's not done until two thirty. And they offered you to say, Mom, you just take give, take the day so you can adjust to the, the third shift? And you're saying that's not going to help you? I, I don't ever take a transition day when I switch crews. It would have helped you. You would have had to call in sick like you were planning on. Were you planning on calling sick or planning on calling in late? Sick. I wouldn't come back that late. Okay. Well, that's, if you told us coming back. If it was you always over, do that. If it was over two hours. You told me you always do that. Okay. Okay. So, yes, so and th these are things that are, are, are not making sense to me. I, and I want you to understand I'm them. How, understand how, that. how they're just kind of floating around here. And yes. We're not touching them. Yep. And there's no explanation. I, I gave you all the answers that I can think of and come up with. I'm not going to try and. You haven't given us all of them. I understand that. And I don't have all of them. Okay? You got I quite, don't have all of them. Quite a few of them, Todd. You know, I, 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 and, and look, at, I would tell you if I had them answers. Okay. Would, you, I, would you? Yes, I would. Can I just run through this with you, Ted? Just, and you tell me if you, you would think anything differently. Okay. So we've described the injuries she's had, which are multiple. And you said that you agree that those injuries couldn't happen from a pipe going through, through the windshield one time. Right. The uh, professionals, those that conducted the autopsy, are telling us the same thing. Impossible. Yep. So we're trying, we, we've gone through those injuries with you. You said she had no injuries beforehand. Mm -hmm. um, you, you pointed out for us. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. Let me see if I can do it now. Sorry. No problem. I have too many people. Oh, sure. My son's phone, so I turn it around. Yeah. Good. No, I don't know how to do it. I'll just wait until he's... Okay. Um, so so you, you kind of explained the scenario coming from um, home with your wife on a morning that she had to work. It somehow became important to replace this windshield after a month. Um, I, I think most people, if you were to say if an uh, object went through your windshield at this driveway, that you probably would have stopped within 100 feet. Or, or so, certainly not turned off onto a side road, ended up in a ditch after hitting. That, that seems strange, doesn't it? No, that, 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 okay. That, how far from the house was I? Okay. Not very far. Right. And a school bus comes through at what? Yeah, okay. So, right. you know, I'm just saying. Uh, I think most people, were, and maybe I'm wrong, but if I can just kind of go through each, each thing. Um, if you were to slant, if you were, most people, I think, if you were to ask in the same scenario, they would have stopped. And, um, uh, Maybe they've done exactly what you did after after the fact, but your odds of someone coming by and helping you out are better on County M, the main highway, than it is by driving out of some side road. Um, given that, you've got these scratches that on the chest can't be explained. Some on your uh, neck that you say may be from doing tree stand work. I, 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 no, I didn't say that some tree stand work. Well, you said possible trail riding. No, I said this possibly could be. This, okay. The, the ones on my neck, I have no clue. You have no, okay. Uh, I, I said that. Okay. I said that. Okay. And we work a lot of domestics, and those are very similar to a domestic dispute type okay. situation. Um, Do you have any any of my stuff on Barb? Well, that's what we're checking. And that that's the point I'm going to get to, if you okay. give me a minute to explain okay. what's going on. Okay. Okay. So the emergency, not emergency run, but somehow a very important run to, to replace a windshield when you have to prepare for this vacation for the weekend has to get done on a rainy morning on a Friday when she has that to That was even how we paid for our camping. Okay. That's all the reason that was. Okay. And uh, in addition to that, um, you have uh, your explanation of how you tried to revive her, right? Okay, you put all that together, and and because we look into this, like I explained earlier, um, the medical examiner says this this very much looks like somebody killed her. Really, the detectives, having painstakingly reconstructed Todd's narrative brick by brick, saw through his evasive maneuvers and convenient gaps within his story. Their patient listening had built a timeline, and now, with chilling clarity, they revealed to Todd that the only possible cause for Barbara's death was murder. This accusation immediately puts Todd back on the defensive, and from this moment on, the ground beneath Todd would only crumble further. So, so when we get that information, we're going to proceed on that, right? Right, yeah, yeah. And, and part of that is, if we were to tell everybody that was suspect, suspected or possibly suspected of killing someone, uh, that we're going to search everything that they own, your phones, yep. your home, yep. car that was at the scene, yep. um, they would get rid of the evidence, right? And one, one might say that in some ways, somebody could have got rid of some of the evidence, given the amount of time that went by. What, what, Having what, what said that, for evidence? okay, and that's what I'm getting to. At the house, they're doing a search warrant now. Okay. They found blood in the unattached garage, drops of blood. In where? In the unattached garage. That's, that's, okay, and that's great. Where's it from? I don't, a deer, um, there's absolutely no blood over there. You can, you that's can run the DNA. Okay. I'm, I'm perfect with that. I have absolutely no problem with that. They're still okay. searching the house. Too, that's really. fine. That's just one, one of the aspects. Yep, that's, that. just tell them, just, just tell them if they can not to mess all the stuff up that we got for Barb for this weekend. Okay. Um, I'm hundred percent okay with them going through everything. Just don't mess up. It's just pictures and all that stuff. Gotcha. Um, okay. I'm hundred percent okay with everything else. All right. But just don't. That we have a lot of time and effort in that. Sure. I don't want them to mess up. Um, they can go okay. through everything. So we're gonna look at the the car. And I think you agree too. And I think everybody with just some knowledge of flying objects realizes that pipe's gonna penetrate substantially more. Yeah. Um, so 
given all those circumstances thus far, this thus far, and the fact that we're going to look at the car, you know, if that that bulge in the windshield doesn't have your skin in there, that won't add up. So you have this unique opportunity today to explain if something else happened and help us understand. We want to help you. I want to look at both you guys right now. Okay. okay. Otherwise, the evidence is going to talk. For and let the evidence talk. I, evidence can talk all it wants to. Evidence can talk all it wants to. Okay? People understand why you wouldn't want to. But I, I did not hurt my wife at all. And you can check that butt in the garage. You can check uh, whatever you want to check. I did not hurt my wife. Okay? You can check. Who did? I, I have no idea. The pipe that kid, it, I'm sorry, but there's no, I was with her. There, I did not hurt my wife. All these injuries happen. I understand that. I understand that, that, that. Coming through that window. That's not, I don't know how they could have. I honestly you do. But you do know. I don't know. And you're not going to get me to snap? I'm not, I'm, 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 I'm not, I'm not, snap. I'm not, I'm, 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 I'm not, I'm not, I'm very, as you know how it happened. I'm very, um, I don't know what you'd call it, but I will not, I don't care how much somebody pushes me, I will not snap. Um, under no circumstances will I snap or... What do you mean by snap? To just blow up and get outraged and... We're not trying to get you outraged, we're well, trying to help I, I you explain. I think you guys are, because you don't realize, I'm without my wife. You're not the first person. And I understand you guys gotta do this. Mm -hmm. Detectives aren't able to make sense of the injuries that occurred on both Todd and Barbara prior to the accident. As they're attempting to extract more information from Todd about the incident, Todd immediately becomes hyper-defensive and even begins to derail the conversation to reverse the victim-offender role, claiming that the investigators are intentionally trying to push him into confessing to a crime he swears he didn't commit. For the entire duration of this interrogation, both detectives have remained admirably calm and friendly with Todd, and at no point have either attempted to instigate or intimidate Todd into giving false statements. This defense mechanism is commonly seen in people who are guilty of something, attempting to redirect the topic elsewhere and confuse or gaslight the person confronting them. But I've told I know you had to do it two or three times to try to get me to say something wrong. I, I, I'm not telling you guys anything that's not... We're still looking for the truth. And I'm giving you my truth. I'm giving you my truth. Is that the truth? That's the truth. How these injuries happen, I have that's no okay. idea. Would you come up with a different conclusion? Would I come up with a different conclusion? You were us, based on what I told you so far. Well, if you were us, if you are looking at it, yeah. I, I probably would. Well, what would that be? But, but is there, I mean, is there, is there nothing? I mean, there's absolutely no way that, um, I mean, we did every scenario and every, I mean, I don't know how fast that truck was going. I told you guys that. that I assumed. I don't know. Yeah, about, we might expect something like that if there's a rollover accident um, at high speed. You know, but, but, um. I've seen video of a pipe that went, got run over, went straight up in the air, and went through a police squad car's windshield sideways on an on ramp at probably anywhere from 25 to 35 miles per hour. And it wasn't traveling. Anyway, it just went straight up in the air, the car drove through, and that had enough. So that made it through sideways. I, I had that slow of a speed. And, and it may have to go through, according to you, according to you, it was going through this way, straight, at, and, and, at and, 90 to 120, depending on the speeds, miles per hour, if you can, if you put both the, the traveling speeds together. Yeah. Yeah. It's not going to stop. I'm, I'm 100 the injuries on on Barb are not consistent with the accident that occurred. They could not; those injuries did not happen in that accident. Well, they did not happen in that accident. Well, they 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 did not happen in that accident. There's no way that those injuries, the totality of those injuries, happened with one blow and in that accident. They did not happen that way. There's no way, no how. Well, what, what, then I, I, I'm telling you what, what. You're not telling us the whole truth. Yes, I am. You're not. I, I'm not, I'm not. I, would, I, I would, wish you were. I wish, I know it's tough, and I'm not trying to get you riled up, but you're not telling us the truth. You're not. There's something else happening. There's a certain there's, there's, I, I, guys, I can't do anymore. 
I can't do anything. I can't tell you anymore. I can't do anymore. You do the search did your, part. Did your son kill her? Hell no. Did your daughter? No. Did anybody my kids love know? my wife. I was with her. I was in the car with her. Was, it, was anybody uh, else at your house? No. You said you called your uh, your mother and my, my son was home. Your son was home till But then. sleeping. Okay. He's home so Thursday was, night. He was sleeping when you left? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And how close is the bedroom to, say, the kitchen area? Assuming you use the kitchen area in the morning? Yeah. Okay. How close is the bedroom? His bedroom's right below us. Okay. I, I was in the car with her. There's, there's nobody that hurt her. So your son, I, your son would tell us that he was home? Yes. That morning? Yes. Okay. And he would also tell us under oath that he didn't hear a disturbance or an argument? He would have come up. We never argue. We never argue. It, it would be... Um, we, we, we never argue. He'll tell you that, yeah. We come back to the spot of these injuries on Barbara that are not consistent with the accident. And there's no possible way that... No. I mean, not with the, the, the different... The different levels of injury, the different planes is what they call them. They refer to them as a, you know, different planes. So it, there's no, no explanation whatsoever. That, uh, different injuries. That pipe didn't come from your house, did it? No. Cause I can show you here. Yeah. It's down to the crime lab. You know what DNA is, right? Yeah. So I just want to make sure that nobody else in the house has their DNA in that pipe. Any reason it would be? What what does this mean? Well, I don't I don't see how it. it that's just an evidence sheet that shows that the, the pipe the pipe is down in the crime lab. Right. This is the pipe that was through the the windshield. This okay. It went to the crime lab for analysis. Okay. It's a metal pipe. Yeah. So it's down there now. Okay. He's asking you is about that pipe wasn't at your house ever. No. So nobody else in the family's DNA will be on that pipe. The detective presents Todd with lab results they received after running DNA tests on the pipe that was found at the scene of the accident. While Todd could have left some of his DNA on it as a result of his attempts to block the pipe from fully entering the vehicle, his DNA wouldn't cover the entirety of the pipe or even the opposite end of it that protruded from the exterior part of the windshield. The test results in Todd's hand indicate that this pipe may have come from his own home and was used to create an accident scene in order to cover up what had actually occurred. It's not like it's a pipe that was no, in the garage. No, yeah, no, it was in a, no, alongside the no, nothing like that. No, out in the whole uh, the no, whole building. I've got out, some, that some detached garage. I've got some over by my I got out there by mm -hmm. and I've got some a poker rod and a pipe that I use for that. What kind of pipe is that? It's just a little piece of. Um, like, like that pipe for a chain link fence. So it's like a pipe? No, it's like a galvanized, like a thin galvanized. Okay. And then I got a blue poker. Was, that it, like, poke. was it like this pipe? I don't know what this pipe. I don't, I don't know. through the windshield. I don't honestly remember what that pipe looked like. Um, I honestly don't remember what that pipe. This is like a, it's just real thin. It's probably this long, maybe. I keep it behind the furnace with a, I got a blue poker there. Now, I usually have a fence post there. So if I can't get one of them to, I get to the back of the furnace <clears throat> with a fence post. There, there's absolutely, I have no, no, I have nothing to worry about with that. Nope. Nothing to worry about with that? With that pipe. Different pipe. What's that? It's kind of strange how you said that. What's that? You with that, with that with pipe, I have nothing. To, there's no, um, there, there, there would be nothing found in that pipe from anybody in my family. That pipe has never been around. Help me, help me understand the injuries to the back of her head. I don't, I don't, I don't know how. Yes, they're significant. Very significant. Todd, I think you're trying not to. 
you're trying not to let it go, but we're coming to the point where it's <laughs> running. It's it's not, there's no explanations for it. You can't the injuries that were unbarred did not occur from that accident, from a pipe going through your windshield, from you taking her out of the car, or you performing CPR. They didn't occur at that time. The injuries to Barb were done prior to that accident. I, 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 I know. They are. They well, are. I was with they her. Were. I know. I was with her, and, and I did not, I would not and will not hurt my wife. I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to. How do, how do all those different, I don't know. How do it? Have separate to, planes of her body. We have from to. from from what you're explaining to us, it doesn't jive. It's not the it's not the mechanism of it's not the cause of injury. It's not the mechanism of injury. Those injuries were caused elsewhere. Well, we're gonna have to try to find something else or figure something out. At this point in the interrogation, both detectives know that the injuries discovered on Barbara's body at the scene of the accident didn't fit the description of what had occurred. A metal pipe falling off a truck wouldn't have caused fractures to the back of someone's skull unless it entered with severe force, and even then, the damage would have occurred to the front of Barbara's skull. With the accusation of murder pinned against him, Todd only continues to delay the inevitable and deny ever hurting his wife, leaving detectives no choice but to continue to dig further into the events that happened. I don't know what, but, but. What is it that concerns you for not telling us? You know, your, your recollection of it is, is pretty vague and not very detailed. Do you, have you, have you, have you ever been in, um. I understand it was traumatic. Uh, and, and, and have you ever been, um, how, how would I say this? Have you ever, have you ever. And, until you have, and, and, and I've been in accidents before, um, nothing major, but I've been in accidents before, and you get, you, your mind starts going 500 miles an hour, and when you, um, until you've been in something like this, where this happens, um, you, 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 and, and I know you guys talk to people every day, and deal with people every day with this. Um, but I, there, there is, I mean, if I could remember it, scene to scene, second to second, I would, I would explain it to you how it happened. But I don't know exactly what it, I, 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 I'm telling you the best that I can remember. I'm telling, and, and I'm, you can shake your head at me. I don't think, you, you're not giving us the whole I'm story. Giving you, uh, I'm giving you my story. I'm giving, I have absolutely zero reason to hurt my wife. Zero reason at all, and especially like this. What, 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 what? We're, not, we're not saying that you intended for it to turn out this way. So what, 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 what would I intend it to do? Well, something may, may have happened where the two of you, you got into, in a, like I said, everybody gets an argument, that you had some kind of argument, got out of control. You can, you can ask. You got out of control, and maybe you can ask, after you first, asking. even. I understand. I'm telling you. Ask everybody, but you were there. I understand that, but you can ask anybody you want to that has been around with us for our entire lives, and you can ask them if we've ever got into a, a, a heated argument, or I've ever raised my voice with. We're her. not saying that's a normal thing that you would have done. We're just saying that there's something that happened here. It's out of the ordinary. It's out of your character. But it happened, and that's what we're trying to get to, and, get to because what we're seeing does it it doesn't happen. It, it didn't happen that way. So something out of your character happened in the middle of all this, that, that some of this occurred. Something happened that you know that that happened. You know what happened. You know exactly what happened, Todd. I don't. And you have to step up and, be, you know, think about your, your kids, your grandkids, all that, that you're not going to have any clue of what's you need to step forward, be the man, 
and, and the God fearing man that you are, and let us and, know and how this bring, happened. We don't need to bring God in. How this happened? You brought you brought God in. You said I did. I, I'm man. just telling Tell you us that. how this happened, so we can explain it, so we can help you out. That's the problem. We don't right now. We got. It, I, I there's an explanation. There's an explanation for everything. I understand. And we that. understand that. We and, deal with it all the time. And we have to and find. We, yes. And why we're here talking to you is because we have to find that because you have that explanation for us. And 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 you do, Todd. I'm I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I have no other. I have nothing else. You have it up there. It's up there. It's. Uh, I don't. Married. This happened to married couples all the time. They would appear on, out in their amongst their friends, to be a perfectly married couple, and bad things happen all the time. And you don't, and I, I could bet that 99% of those guys would have never believed that it could have come to that, that it never could have happened that way, that they weren't even capable of it, and they just got into a rage and couldn't stop what was happening. Well, 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 well why, why would I, why would I have a pipe? Why would I, I mean? Well, you know we just had a little conversation. What are the odds, first of all, to come down a road that isn't heavily traveled and to have a pipe come through your windshield? If that road is heavily traveled in the mornings and evenings. Well, not like an interstate or a U.S. highway. So there aren't regular right. vehicles, and of all those vehicles, very few of them are going to be carrying a pipe. Even fewer of them are going to have the pipe come loose. Even less odds that it's going to land where it did, in the manner it did, and then sustain the injuries that she had and in addition to that what are the odds that that would happen to a guy that changes uh, windshields i mean what do you suppose those odds are one in a trillion if yeah. at all but there's that so, one but you asked me the about the totality that you asked me about the pipe you know that's that explains how the pipe might get there what do you mean the guy that knows windshields and oh gosh, you guys. I mean, no, 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 no. There, there's absolutely no way. There's absolutely no way that if I was going to hurt my wife, I would have done it like this. Absolutely no way. Oh, so but, you shoved the pipe through and hit her. I'm saying, but what? Somewhere along the road, you got you got in an argument. The two of you prior, you got an argument. But we didn't. We did not get an argument. And it came to blows. It got out of control. And we we did not. You thought she was dead. We did not get an argument. Absolutely no way. No way did we get an argument. How did her, how did the bone in her throat get broken? I I don't know how much how much force can that take. I don't know. How did her nose get broken? I don't know that either. How did she get a damage to her lips? I I I don't know all this stuff, guys. How did she get in the forehead? How how did how I mean, she have massive wounds to the back? Where did the, where did, the, did did we did we I mean did, can no, she no well I don't I, we, I mean there's, there's no, gotta be no, a they weren't that's that we get no if her drop her head no that didn't cause those injuries those injuries were caused elsewhere and not in the car well they, they were, weren't were massive injuries they weren't caused outside the car where were they caused I I, I, tell us that. I, I can't tell you that I'm you telling could, you I can't tell you, you that you could tell us that no, no I can't want to. I do not have an answer for that. Because they weren't they weren't there and the accident did not cause those. And you know they didn't. You can sit here, you know that those didn't that those injuries, all those injuries did not happen in that car. And you know it. I'm not I'm not gonna argue with you guys. I, I'm not trying to argue there. I'm just saying you know that that happened. I, and you and know that, that those injuries were not consistent with that type of an accident injury. No way. No how didn't happen. Well, we need you to explain this how. I, I, I can't explain it to you again. How did you How did you get the injuries on your hand? From the windshield. Okay, explain that. How you did that? What did you do to the windshield that caused those cuts? I lunged out for the pipe. I think. Okay, and and how did your hands get cut by lunging out for the pipe? I pushed him through the windshield. You pushed it through or the windshield. Not through it, but into it. Okay. All right. How did the blood on the, get on the outside of the windshield? 
I suppose when I pulled the pipe out. Well, what what would it be then? I don't know. It's not that way. Pulled it on the inside of the windshield if you pulled out, but not on the outside of the windshield. How would it have been on the outside? Because it, it, the pipe's not bloody. Once again, Todd is asked to recall certain events that occurred at the scene of the accident. No matter how many times detectives prove his alibi doesn't match the evidence they've presented against him, Todd continues to deny the accusation of murder. Todd knows that the punishment for the crime committed is severe, and he could potentially spend the rest of his life behind bars. By denying guilt and forcing the prosecution to present their case, Todd likely hopes for a plea bargain or reduced charges if the evidence isn't airtight. So, it's, if, if it's on the windshield, how can it not be? Uh, you tell me. I, I don't know. I don't know how to tell you. Yeah. What I'm telling you is what, what I know and what, what, it, what I can tell you. So the theory of, one, that we know that the injuries weren't caused... All those injuries weren't caused by a pipe coming through. You can take that off the board. The fact that the laws of physics prevent that pipe from flying across your car because of the terminal velocity is such a thing that can't, it can't happen. So that's two in that. Have we, have they ever... I mean, can we, can we do that? Can we put a piece of pipe on it? We've, we've, already, we've already realized that there's no bump in the road. You know, the terminal velocity, so the velocity of that going down a road is not going to cause, right. it's not going to affect us. It wouldn't have necessarily been a bump. It's not going to, if it rolled off or a bump, there's no bump. If it rolled off, the terminal, it's going to, it's not going to sail. The, the drag with a, a pipe that heavy, there's not going to be much drag. It's a circular pipe, okay? It's not going to sail. It's not going to, you know, it's like people, it's people that think they're going to jump from uh, like a third story level and they can make it to the pool. Well, they don't realize that that's, so they're going to jump and they realize, oh, that's 25 feet, but I should be able to fly at an angle. That's not how, that's how college kids die at spring break because they jump and they go out and they stop and they go Get down. with force. This is rolling. There's not any force, not any, I mean, even take a little bit of speed with it, but you're not going to take much speed, it's going to go straight down. That's how those things happen. That pipe is not going to sail all the way across your vehicle. You said it came off there and it's kind of coming right at you. That's two things that we have questions about now, right? You're following me along with it, right? Yeah. The injuries, yeah. not consistent with the pipe. The fact that a pipe went through with, the physics say that that's not going to happen also. You're driving on the morning. You're going to go up north camping. And we do that all the time, so you can't use that scenario. Okay. You can ask any of my kids. I'm a last you minute. Didn't, you didn't finish. You didn't finish. What I, yeah, I didn't finish. You let me finish. It. Okay, sorry. So you're a last minute procrastinating packer. That's fine. So now after a month of not talking to a guy that said he had a windshield for you to fix, which he disputes. He doesn't, he doesn't corroborate that with your story. You're going to go driving on a morning that your wife's got to be at school by 8, 8.30. You're going to drive somewhere, unknown location, to find a Ford pickup truck that should have the keys in it and pick that up and drive it back to your house to fix after a month of not having any contact with this person. After you went up looking for it the night before, up through Holman, but you didn't stop at his house because he said he wasn't home. How did you know he wasn't home? He works nights. Okay. He was working nights that night? Well, uh, I think unless he went back to it, he gave up maintainer now, so maybe he went back I to think, another I think he was on vacation. So his he, first day back was uh, he, he, Tuesday. 
he gave up maintainer, so I don't know if it was a vacation or if it was a transaction. So you didn't know it wasn't working nights, but you didn't know so that. I, I wasn't sure. You didn't know that. So you didn't know if it was home or not. Mm, I wasn't sure. No. But you didn't stop by after going to look for this truck that he wants you to fix the windshield on, driving up through Holman, you didn't bother to go up to his house to ask him maybe where it was or anything like that. You were just going to, on your own, willingly drive around Holman. And, and, and to we, pick do, it up. we take drives all the time. Absolutely. We take drives all the time. But you're telling us that you're dive, going there to pick up this pickup truck so you can change it because your wife's been on you about the windshield that's in the, in the, drive, in the garage. That's three now, right? Okay, look at three, three things that were, okay. oh yeah, you count that one, because he disputes the fact that you, you can do any work for him at all. Okay. The only work you're going to do has been May. Okay. It runs out of buddies. Okay. And this is a 250? What's a 250, an F-250, what are those called? Super duty. Okay. So, you're going to do this work on this buddy, but you're not going to call him. You're going to go just, and it's Friday morning, you just go to the top of Shufflebine Hill, and see if you see a pickup truck in somebody's driveway. A Ford F-250 pickup truck in somebody's driveway. If you didn't, you just go take your wife back to... Your wife is not wearing jeans on a Friday like they normally always wear. She's wearing something else. But you're going to take her directly to there. Okay. Now we're looking at Minimum of four things an hour. And, you, and you, I, you do any of those? And I don't dress my wife. I, I didn't say so that. I how didn't she dressed for her Friday was. You had nothing to do with that. You know, Absolutely nothing to so do with that. Because if I dressed her, it would be. Yep. 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 Nothing to do with it. You yep. know, that's, her, that's her deal. Yep. And she knows she's going to work on a Friday and she's going to put uh, the jeans on like she normally wants. Yep. After three hours of interrogating Todd, the detective is given a moment to repeat Todd's alibi and to no one's surprise, it makes absolutely no sense how he would have managed to commit to that many tasks that Friday morning, all within the span of one hour before his life turned upside down due to an accident. He's supposed to be driving his wife to work while looking for a Ford F-250 he claims to be replacing a windshield on and having absolutely no idea where this vehicle is, all while prepping for a camping trip at the same time. Not only does the story make no sense, but when the detective mentions Barbara wasn't wearing casual clothing like the rest of the teachers do on Friday, Todd immediately denies dressing her, which is rather strange. The detective simply made an observation of what Barbara was wearing at the time of her death, not questioning what or how she was wearing it. This reveals yet another glaring red flag from Todd. Four. Um... You're not sure how those injuries happen on, on your neck. We don't have an explanation for that. Mm -hmm. We have your explanation to the injuries on your hand as caused by the windshield. It should be the left, left hand corn. There's blood on the outside of the windshield. We can't explain that. Help us try to understand how this all happened. I, 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 I can talk here until I'm blue in the face. I told you guys. Not until you're ready to tell us what happened. I, 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 I'm, I'm telling you everything that I know about this. See, this. You need no one detail. No, I'm not. Just one. Mm -hmm. You're going to go camping now. That's the other one. You're going to go camping that weekend. But now I was going to drive them up there. I was going to come back because you were late for work that time. I wasn't going to be late for work. Yes, you were. I was going to call in to work. Oh, you're going to call in sick, which... which after, I, after they gave you the opportunity to take a, a day to the, to switch to night shift after they told you that you could do that, you are going to take a sicker instead of taking the day that they are going to give you. Help us understand, Todd. I, I, I can't help you anymore. You won't help us. You I can. will help you. You, you, can. you. you can help us. You can help us explain all of this. You're not, you're, you don't want to, but. I want to. Then tell I us. Am. Then tell us. I, I, I can't tell you anymore. I can't tell you anymore. Significant injury to the back of the head. <laughs> 
significant, and it wasn't just one hit. I, I did not did not do that. What happened? I didn't. I, I, what happened? I was driving the car. What happened? Sir, I, I can't. You I'm. Won't. I will, and then, I am. Then do. I, I am. I'm telling you what I can tell you. I'm telling you what I can tell you. Why don't you tell us what happened? Um, maybe when the, um, you see what they didn't find at the house and like that, right? Then you tell us? No, I, I, there's nothing I can tell you. We need your help to explain this, Todd. It wasn't, this wasn't an accident, like I, I told you numerous times, it wasn't an accident caused by a pipe going through the window. Something happened, and it was uncharacteristic of yourself. You're not a violent person, you're not, there's something that occurred. It, 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 you don't it, argue, you don't lose your cool. There's something occurred that caused this. There's absolutely nothing that occurred there. That, that well, I, there is. There is something that occurred that caused this, and it wasn't but, that accident. But, but, but it that wasn't was, that accident. You understand that. You told me that you know that those injuries could not have, all those different injuries could not have occurred as explained. The doctor told us that. I explained that to you. You sat there and shook your head. Yep. Yeah, you mean the doctor? And, yes. and, and, and no, I don't know. There's no way. I don't know the, 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 I mean, how the scenario of, of everything went, I don't know. I was, as far as... I mean, if, if there could have been, I mean, there, there's, um, you know, I don't know how, what happened there, how it happened. I do not know how... You're, you're telling me how it happened. You're, you're told, you're... I don't know how those you're, injuries occurred yeah, as they did. And neither do I. Right. And how it occurred... I I'm telling you, the story that you're giving us is not how they occurred. Those, all those injuries did not occur with that pipe going through that windshield. I know that for a fact. That okay. I know for a fact. So, so that I'm positive about that. You know they didn't. After that, so, you know that that didn't happen that way. So when do they get their results from what they're doing? They're working on them as we speak. Okay. They're still working on them. Okay. They've got all that stuff going on. You know that didn't happen that way. You so, know that there was injuries could not have happened with a the pipe. There's no question in my mind, in your mind, that here, 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 uh, three to the back of the head, here to the the crushing of the with with marks around the neck, bruising around the neck, and a uh, fractured bone. Those uh, didn't happen with with that coming through that windshield. The velocity of that thing, if you're saying as it is, would have gone. If it would have hit your wife in the head, it would have gone right through. If that's what you're saying, and we know that that's not possible. So, do I gotta wait here until Tell they get me. that done? You can leave. You can leave any time you want. I told you that before. I want to work you with can, you guys, but I don't want to sit here and and well, I, want, like this. I just want to figure out what happened. And so do I. And so do I. That's a part I of the problem. That. Is, I know that you know. If if, if I knew. I would say something. Really? Yes. You would? I, I would tell you if I knew what happened to my wife. Do you know what happened to your wife? I, I do not know how the injuries happened. They didn't happen there, and you said you knew that. Or you, kind of shook, I, you shook your head going, yeah, I agree with you. I didn't agree with you. You're just I said it, it's, it's very unlikely. Mm -hmm. no, our, our, doctors, our, just, doctors are not just saying unlikely. You know how stranger things happen? They have. The stranger things have happened. Okay, so and this, this, this is a stranger thing that happened. I, I don't want to say, I don't accuse you of grasping at straws, but try to explain then how can all these different injuries happen with a pipe coming through, uh, uh, supposedly coming through a windshield? They can't. You know, we could sit here and pawn through it with you every time, but if you, you're just going to let the evidence speak for it, you're not the first guy that's, that, that maybe doesn't want to come forward. But... People are going to want answers. It's not about me and investigator Leinfelder just hammering you with questions in the hope that 
that we get some trophy at the end of the day it's, it, that has nothing to do with it. Right. What's going to happen is family's going to want to know, friends are going to want to know, and if they find out all this, this stuff, they're going to say what happened to Todd. The detective passively states to Todd that their only goal is to figure out what exactly happened to Barbara and that they aren't trying to blame him for her death. Todd's nonverbal defensiveness, coupled with deliberate attempts to derail the conversation numerous times, has only hurt his case for the entirety of this interrogation. Barbara's family still hasn't been given the full details as to what caused her death just yet, but when they learn of her injuries and realize Todd came out of the supposed accident practically unscathed, they'll soon suspect Todd had some involvement in her death. The investigation is ongoing, and as you know, there's a lot of things that they're they're going to come back with. That now is the time to get out in front of them. If you had the opportunity to do that, you're saying that you can't. I think that you won't right now. But there's going to be things that are becoming coming out through the course of this investigation. And how so there's there's a lot of the things that are in the course of this investigation right now. That as I went through like five different things with you of what you said happened to can't happen and remember i explained all of it okay and 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 you're gonna and and for for you to use that and say that i said they can't happen um I, I'll, I'll, I'll i'll give you that i said that not that you 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 didn't agree that they can't happen i'm saying that, i'm saying that they can't they can't happen i'm not saying that you agreed with me and said that they can't yeah i agree with you they can't happen i'm not saying that at all right. so that you don't have to explain that okay. yeah. i'm just that's what i'm telling you that there's there's so many things that the from justin yeah just the justin story which doesn't make any sense whatsoever yeah. and it's I, don't okay. which, I don't it's not the only thing well but that's you know, not the only thing okay okay that is not the only thing okay the fact that there i mean again uh, I don't have to go through with you anymore. Right, right. And you know. Yep. yep. Um, I don't know if Mark explained to you or not, but we have a uh, search warrant to get your DNA. Okay. Um, all it is is us taking a swab of the You don't inside. need search warrants for this uh, stuff. Well, we, that's how they, in these type of situations, that's what we do. We could ask for consent. We had it. If you want to give it as consent, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But we just it's just a swab the inside of your mouth and that gets sent in. So we have your DNA on file. Yeah. You want to just put your gum out there. Detectives are taking DNA samples from Todd that will later be used to cross-examine evidence against him. DNA evidence, when combined with other forms of evidence like witness testimonies, alibis, or fingerprints, can create a more compelling case against a suspect. If the suspect's DNA doesn't match the crime scene evidence, it can eliminate them from the investigation and allow detectives to focus on other leads. So do they completely destroy my house or do they put it back together somewhere? I don't think they're going to completely destroy it. Okay. I mean... No, they're not tearing walls off, if that's what you mean. But I mean, like, or... You know, I mean, I still want to go home and they got everything just strewn all over. Yeah, no, like I said, we're here, so I don't right. assume that it's... Okay. And that's, I'm, I'm fine they're there. They wouldn't need a search warrant to come in. Um, I'm I'm 100%... Well, sometimes we don't get that kind of cooperation, so... I suppose. So that's why we go ahead and go ahead and put the... We get our, get all of our search warrants and papers in order if we need them. We need them. Okay. We don't have them. That's just... Yeah. That's, that's, you need to look at my other vehicle I got out here or no? Where's it out? What's that? Parking lot? Yeah. Well, no, it's out now. Whose is it? Yeah, it's across the street. It's yours or your son's? Mine. It's our, our Tahoe. Okay. Okay. Can you show me? Did you get nothing in there? Yeah. Okay. Let me just swab the inside of your cheek. Okay. No pain, just. Yeah. 
there anything you want to tell us that you haven't told us? No, there's not. Is I, there I, anything you're going to tell us that you haven't told us? Um, no, there's not. I, 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 um, just go through and... That's what's, that's what's happening. Yeah, I know it. And I can, I can tell you right now what those doctors in Madison were saying is that that's not it. That's not it at all. Well, I'm going to stand to my word until... I mean, I, I'm going to... Until I'm, when? Until I... Until you can't stand anymore, until you're back in the corner? No. Now's the time to get it out. And, and I can... It's, I'll be in the corner then. It's tough. I, I... 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 I'll stand in the corner then. I mean, I'll get out of the corner. I, I'm... Uh, Truth releases you. I know it does. I know it does. I know it does. And I, I have nothing... Nothing I'm lying about. Nothing. Maybe lie of omission about it. Is it what? Lie of omission, possibly. What's that mean? By not telling us what you have, but you know. If I knew more, I would talk to you. I wish that was true. And 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 you don't know me very well, so you can say that. I wish it was true. I I, I really. Um, you know what I mean? Um, and and I know under the circumstances what it is, but. Well, um, the circumstances are one thing. And then your explanation is a completely other thing, which is completely far-fetched, unbelievable, as you can possibly imagine. It, no, no one, in, no one of her right mind is gonna buy that story that you just told. I can't, I can't help it. I, I can't. You have, I mean, it, after the fact, you have an explanation for things that you told before. That oh no no, I meant this, this was this. I, I didn't change good. nothing. You added other things to it. Well, I didn't say I was going camping all weekend. We, you go out all the time. I, well, I just switched that. You didn't know that we you knew that you we checked with your work that you're supposed to work at six thirty at night. You didn't know that we talked to Justin and said Justin said I haven't talked to him about a windshield and, and, since and May. It, you know that was stuff that I was going to be worried about. Don't you think I would have called them and said, "Who, hey, what's going on?" Or here's what's what. No, you know better than that. No, I don't. I don't plan. I don't do this. Stuff. Obviously, you didn't plan because this is I don't this do this stuff. Life right now. I don't. Something happened that you're not telling us. Okay. You know I appreciate the injuries, your time. You know the injuries are are what they are. They didn't occur as you said them. You're the only one that was there. You're the only one that knows. I am Barb. And you know everything. Yeah, and Barb, we can't ask Barb, no, can no, we? we can't. We can't ask Barb. We can ask you. And you're the only one that's going to be able to tell us. In her in her memory, you're the only one that's going to be able to tell us. Yeah. Someday you're going to. I think you're going to. It's going to fester and rot. You're not going to be. It's going to. You're going to tell us what what happened. Accidents happened. It wasn't the accident on the road. It was an accident that happened prior to that between you and Barb. And things got out of hand. And things things shouldn't have happened that happened, but they happened. Oh. And that's what it is. I would never, never. I don't care what the explanation was hurt my wife or anybody for that reason especially in that manner something happened something something triggered it you said you don't snap but something happened so you're gonna something let me happened. know where the next step goes or what if you want to know all you gotta do is call so i can call anytime and see yeah, what's you bet do you have a card i'll get you one before i leave here okay i just want to make sure you got the opportunity to let us know if there's anything that you're you haven't told us. I, I there's nothing. Is your copy here, Todd? For three and a half hours, detectives interrogated Todd regarding the accident that occurred the day Barbara's life was cut short. They meticulously recounted every possible detail surrounding that day, from the moment that Todd awoke to taking his wife to work while looking for a pickup truck to the moment that he placed the 911 call about the accident. For three and a half hours, Todd led detectives on a goose chase with fabricated stories, a complete lack of recollection, and inability to recount even the most basic details regarding the accident. His erratic movements and speech patterns, almost incoherent at times, coupled with his extremely strange body movements, only gave the authorities more evidence to stack against him leading up to his trial. DNA 
Oh, I don't need this. Okay. I mean, do, should I keep this or? Keep it if you want to. So now I just wait for them to get the search warrant back and the. Yeah, I think. I mean, not the search right. warrant, but the. Yeah, what they. They have to finish up out there and they'd rather just get it done. Not any, they have any interruptions. Yeah. Right, okay. So I'll call the kids and find out where they've been calling. So I'm, I'll find out where they are and we'll just wait until. Um, so how will we know when they're done? What, what do I do there? Uh, how about I call you? Can we call you on the phone? Yeah, on this one. Why don't you give me the number? I know I jotted it down somewhere. But... 790. Okay. 5347. 47. You'll have it for a while? Yeah. I'll have this for, for a little while. Okay. 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 Make sure uh, he's down here. Uh, I don't know. Right out there. He's down here. Friend? On December 5th, 2017. Todd went before the court to further plead his innocence against the accusations of him murdering his wife. During the trial, the two opposing parties presented their arguments regarding the cause of Barbara's injuries, those arguments being whether the injuries resulted from a tragic accident or a violent altercation. The dispute extended to the contested nature of the windshield and conflicting interpretations of the glass fracture patterns by opposing experts. The prosecution conceded its uncertainty about Todd's motive for killing Barbara, revealing a lack of evidence supporting claims of an affair, history of domestic violence, or financial troubles between the couple. In an extremely unconventional move, Todd Kenhammer chose to testify in his defense, expressing distress during his police interview and attributing inconsistent statements about their morning plans to his emotional state. Despite ongoing struggles with his memory, Todd mentioned a third person he was supposed to see that morning, and when questioned about changing his story for the trial, he denied doing so in response to police uncovering his lies. Despite Todd Kenhammer's children standing by his innocence, stating their belief in his truthfulness, the jury ultimately convicted him. On December 14, 2017, Todd Kenhammer received a life sentence in prison with the possibility of parole in 30 years. In 2021, Todd Kenhammer returned to court for an evidentiary hearing before the same judge, aiming to argue the ineffectiveness of his original defense team and to present critical new evidence. A forensic pathologist contradicted the original medical examiner, asserting that Barbara's injuries were the result of an accident. But despite this new testimony, it did nothing to convince the judge that the original prosecution wasn't necessary. Todd Kenhammer is currently serving his life sentence behind bars and will be eligible for parole on March 9th, 2048. He remains incarcerated at the Dodge Correctional Institution where he will remain for the rest of his sentence. Hey everybody, this is Johnny. Thank you so much for watching to the end. I appreciate it so much. Um, you know, this is a new style of video that I'm doing. Uh, you know, obviously a new setup and all this other good stuff. I've got a lot of really neat things coming and uh, this is the, uh, what, one? There's one more video after this and then that'll be the end of season one for Morbid Curiosity. And we're gonna be taking it to the next step from there. Um, I'm very excited to share all this stuff with y'all. It's been a long time, a long process in the works, but um, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much. Um, if there's any questions or comments or anything like that, please definitely let me know. Um, and again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for being a part of this. And thank you guys for everything. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.